Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'll talk about media architecture making the invisible visible. I was asked earlier if I'm a magician relating to the, the subtitle. I'm afraid I'm not. I'm an architect and trained as interactive designer, so making invisible visible, I'll, I'll explain that later, but no magic, I promise. Um, I represent the, the Danish architect uh, office, uh, design office, Collision, uh, and we've been there for 11 years, and somehow and somewhere along that way, we <clears throat> were caught in a traffic jam at the intersection of architecture, interaction design, strategic communication, participatory processes, and academic research. I have to say, no one got harmed so far in that jam, and actually, we, we like it there. Uh, so, so that's our field, what we work with. We, have a, we seek a curious approach, uh, which is uh, research-oriented, so we have different relations to research projects uh, at the universities uh, in Denmark, uh, and uh, like it that way, are driven by it. And to, to make it the simplest equation of uh, our work would be to have a human-oriented perspective on space and technology. Uh, but I've been asked to, to talk about the media architecture, so what is that all about? Uh, it can be a lot of things. Uh, it can take up multiple shapes. Uh, you can find it in uh, different uh, situations. And it definitely got to do with a lot of different uh, aspects from our daily life, and uh, one could take a, a look at some of them. Uh, of course, it relates to architecture itself. It's got to do with communication. It could have uh, something to do with, uh, let's say, a, a public service, adver advertising, branding, uh, etc. But also aspects of, uh, of art, maybe news uh, or, or playful interaction, and I'll show you uh, examples of, of that. Uh, our perspective lately on, on media architecture has been um, enhanced brand ambience, and uh, that can be explained when, as when light and media is or are integrated in, in the architecture and the background images of, of that quote is uh, a picture taken from the Danish Pavilion at the Expo 2010 uh, by big architects, and where we, uh, or I, together with KV, a center at the University of Aarhus, and Martin Professional did the uh, total lighting installation, which was a, a dynamic uh, set of, of uh, light. It could also have to do with when the media and light is in dialogue with the surrounding and uh, relevant for the context of today, uh, we see here a, a, a picture of uh, TED, TEDx in Hamburg, where we did an installation, again, with Martin Professional and another architect and in dialogue with TEDx slash Red Onion, uh, which, as you see here, has panels above the speaker's head that uh, illustrated the communication on Twitter. So it uh, continuously scanned Twitter's uh, exactly communication and represented that communication in relation to, to the specific event. It could also have to do with when light and media is uh, supporting a brand, uh, referring to organizations or a company. I won't go into detail with that. Or finally, when having an experience-oriented uh, and aesthetic dimension to it. But, okay, that's a lot of words. It's, it's better to get uh, examples of, of what it could, could be, uh, and, and I will definitely show you later. But maybe, first of all, I should explain this, the subtitle, the, ma the magic part, <laughs> make what visible. Uh, and the way I'll introduce it, at least, is by, by explaining or giving uh, some, some uh, thoughts about how we've been working lately on, uh, on projects dealing with uh, energy consumption, or how to produce uh, power or supply power to, to cities, uh, CO2 emissions and uh, climate changes. I mean, uh, 
big subjects relevant for all of us, but at the same time so abstract and hard to grasp that we had had to look into new ways and strategies to, to dealing with it. So uh, just uh, some examples of, of new ways of interfacing towards energy consumption. Uh, we have uh, been working with uh, more playful uh, interfaces for, for creating experience-oriented uh, exhibition setups for, for explaining power con consumption, uh, gaming situations for citizens and municipalities where they could meet and discuss uh, the challenges and not at least um, 3D interactive setups where you could uh, get understanding of what happened if, if the water rises uh, so and so many meters. So, I guess, and as explained uh, in, in depth by some of the previous speakers, uh, it's, it's, it's easy to see that there is this big uh, issue uh, or need for communication, but it's also at the same time really hard to discuss these things. And uh, especially within the field of energy consumption, CO2 emission and uh, climate changes, that's really a hard job to do. Uh, and Referring to some uh, reports uh, well back to 2008, at least the Danish population, 38% uh, 30 of them could not or did not see uh, or relate the, uh, the CO2 emission to the climate changes. So, and, and I mean, so, so we had some challenges here. And as uh, said uh, uh, before from other speakers, most people do not know much about their actual uh, consumption power or or whatever it could be, and the related effects to the environment or surroundings. So something has to be done. And I mean, in the perspective of being as simple as it is, things that we do not understand uh, is of no value of us, or uh, might even be frightening. So our job has been to, through the projects that I'll come to in a second, to create uh, or interpret uh, make the invisible, yes, exactly visible, or the abstract, tangible, or easier to understand, and uh, not at least uh, transfer boring situations, which it is to many people to discuss climate changes, energy consumptions, etc. It can be boring, if not done in the right way, to create a more uh, uh, yeah, uh, interesting and playful uh, attitude to it. So to frame, uh, these uh, parameters and wishes, we have been working with a strategic uh, process model uh, called ELIA that stands for Attention, Experience, Learning, uh, Influence and Action, which is like the steps that we see that is important to like, uh, um, create or, or have a look at, uh, take care of uh, when uh, communicating, not at least in urban space, uh, which are the examples that I will come to. Uh, whereas they will only take, uh, take care of the three first ones. But uh, if you travel with me to uh, a public uh, setup, and uh, more specifically Copenhagen, then we have lined up more or less the ingredients, like uh, really abstract, uh, demanding issues like climate changes, energy consumptions, etc., and a public s space which is like the uh, city arena for all of us, like where we all uh, m move daily. And here we find our latest project, uh, the world cities will grow green, where we take use of, let's say, size and surprise, and that's where I return to the media architecture thing. And I would like a movie up here, thank you. So imagine being in, in Copenhagen, and this for sure has to be seen live. So it's a poor representation, though it's a nice big movie here behind me. But we are in the main town hall uh, in Copenhagen, uh, looking towards the, the city hall, uh, 1,500 square meters facade, which is enlightened with projectors. And by doing so, we can uh, create a communicative facade on, on the town hall itself. And by doing this, we, of course, communicate with uh, the citizens and uh, hopefully in, in eye height with them. That's at least uh, what we seek to do. And uh, what we have here is happening, uh, what is happening here is that we like set the scene uh, 
and uh, with surprising effects, uh, try to to uh, illustrate that something new is going on and catch people's attention and hopefully give them an interesting ex experience for them to at, at all uh, use some time to look at it. And what is going on uh, in the top of, of this communicative thing is uh, small statements related to the subject that we just, I just mentioned, climate changes, energy uh, consumptions, etc., and related to parallel activities within uh, some ongoing, at that moment, ongoing uh, conferences in, in Copenhagen uh, by uh, green growth leaders from around the world. And having them transferred into uh, I hide communication to the citizens, making it possible for families to that just were bypassers communicate about these things, hopefully uh, bringing them home to to the, the dinner and keep on discussing them. If that was the case, then our job would have been a success. Yeah. I'd like to go back to the slides. Thank you. Uh, my next uh, project, which is like giving hopefully an idea of how, how we think of uh, working with these aspects, is the <coughs> Climate Wall, a project I did uh, with KVA Center at the University at Aarhus, um, which was in relation to, a, a, again, a large uh, climate exhibition uh, from the municipality of Aarhus, who were uh, uh, trying to convincing the, the very city about that we should, um, or the city should go into a more uh, CO2 efficient mode. And uh, knowing that it could be a challenge to, to get people's attention on the street, we then uh, seek to, to work with uh, we could call it a social design and a, uh, definitely uh, playful interactions within this project. Uh, and it has to be seen as a movie again, uh, which communicates way better. So uh, the, the context is more or less the same as uh, in Copenhagen. We are in a, uh, in a public space in, in Aarhus, which is the second largest town of Denmark. And uh, the situation is like this, at least in Denmark, that uh, when you walk on the street, then uh, normally your no nose would be pointing down. So it's not, I mean, normal to uh, say hello to strangers or talk to anyone on the street unless you know them really good or meet a friend. Uh, I guess that's how it is in, in most of Europe. <clears throat> uh, but we would like to, uh, to create an uh, experience that dealt with exactly that. So what you see here is that it like rains with words in relation to the exhibition uh, on the other side of, of that wall, so to speak, or that relates to climate uh, emission, or sorry, uh, climate changes. And uh, when stopping up uh, in front of a word, uh, it, it, uh, a bubble appears around it and the word grows and slowly the, the bubble or the speech bubble uh, rises up into the, the sentence which is created of all those words. And I mean, that plays with the idea of uh, magnetic poetry that you can do on your refrigerator by combining words. But whereas you are alone in front, often at least, in front of your refrigerator, this happens in public space. So you have to agree with uh, the man or woman next to you what to write. So you have to get into some dialogue with the people on the street to control the message or to play with it together. And that has been interesting aspects for us to, to work with. So here, uh, I want to show you a, a, a last example, which is broadening up the field a bit, uh, at least the perspective on, on um, the domain uh, energy uh, that relates more to activities uh, within a situation, the lift life, so to speak. And uh, it's a... Um, large-scale installation, uh, again referring to media architecture, that uh, we did uh, with our good uh, collaborators, Martin Professional, at their headquarters, uh, taking advantage of some of their products, uh, where we wanted to create a communicative piece that were dealing with weaving 
the inside activities and the outside activities together in one uh, and the same expression. And doing so, we had to uh, develop some uh, further interaction uh, possibilities among them, mobile technologies and uh, some integrated sensors in the building. And uh, let's have a look at that one. So I'll bring you to, it's Aarhus again. And here we look at the, the building uh, where we find this 180 square meter uh, lead surface integrated uh, in the building. And uh, one of the first thing to, to look at here is the iPad functionality that was developed uh, uh, where just like having the climate wall, you could play with words, then you could uh, combine words in different ways on the iPad, on the small screen, so to say, and then send it, distribute it towards the large screen and share it with uh, the people around you. Other aspects of the design is more related to an organic or abstract uh, simply interpretation of the architecture. We're having patterns uh, rolling over the, the screen itself or representing digital shadows coming from the exact building itself. But uh, as promised, uh, we also uh, had some sensors built in. So when uh, a person enters the building, a pulse of distortion is distributed throughout the very building and uh, communicates in a subtle, well, subtle, it's huge and big and it lights up the very thing, but in a subtle way, it tells the story about the, the actions and uh, uh, <clears throat> the, the human behavior within the building. At the same time, we have sensors looking towards the street uh, that takes care of uh, telling the system about uh, when a vehicle passes or if a person acts in front of the building and, and the facade uh, responds to that as well. As a final thing, I would like to, to illustrate uh, with the movie here is uh, what we call the mosaic, which uh, plays with the idea of social media, media integrated in the facade. So uh, coming from the photo booth setup you saw before, we have now developed a fully integration with the iPad, so you can take your picture and have it sent to the screen as a part of a digital guest book set up. So <laughs> I, I hope uh, by running through these projects, uh, it, it gives you an idea of uh, how we think of the potential of weaving the inside and the outside of, of buildings together and use the facades, uh, and not at least in, in public uh, domains as communicative pieces that could be uh, potential communicators for, for subjects uh, like uh, energy consumption, um, climate changes, etc. So before leaving you here, just get even more speculative, or I will get speculative by just showing some uh, examples of what we're working with here and now uh, and where it might end up. Um, I won't go into detail with explain, but simply just leave the, the, uh, the images behind me standing here as examples of coming from the architecture or media architecture, which is uh, truly uh, or can be truly uh, visually engaging to something that plays with all senses and uh, appeals to a more engaging way of, of dealing with space itself. So we are looking forward to realize that and tell that story next time, maybe. Thank you.